Okay, Coach, if you can uh, help us out with an opening statement and get an impressive win last night. Well, we're really excited about the way we played last night, and we know we've got to have all of that uh, level of execution, defensive intensity, connectedness, uh, plus some, uh, to be competitive tomorrow. And because Kentucky brings so much length, in, 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 and certainly Chattanooga brought a lot of length, and we, got, we attacked that pretty well with their zone, but the length, the strength, uh, the depth, all those things that Kentucky has are, are going to be a great challenge. And um, we've got to say it's, it's really it's, it's not a lot different game plan than so many other ones. We've got to get back on defense because their ability to run the break, and they do a great job of getting to the rim on that break, especially with their guards. So we've got to get back and we've got to get the, the fort set down right away uh, in the lane. And then you've got to do an excellent job of staying in front of the dribble. Our help has got to be fantastic. And then they are just, they're one of the best teams in the country, as usual, at offensive rebound on the ball. So we've got to do a great job of blocking out. Uh, offensively for us, there's no question that if we come down and try to uh, attack that set defense or try to challenge them at the basket, uh, or if we don't get great spacing and ball movement, um, we'll play right into their hands. And, and with what they're doing with block shots on the year, and especially last night, we played some good shot blocking teams this year, especially a team back home like Purdue. But um, Kentucky's at another level with that. And, and um, the length again, because of not only with the starters, but when they go to the bench. So I thought, I think John has done a fantastic job uh, with that team of making them better. They guard with a real, real purpose. You know, I know we've gotten better defensively. And from what I've seen in that team for, from the year, there's no question that they've gotten better defensively. They move the ball really well. They're shooting it at a good rate. They're shooting. 43, 44% from three in their last five games. And it was almost 50 before last night's game. So they're getting not only the, the play at the rim, but they're getting great shooting. And we're going to just have to be – the old mantra of one possession at a time is, is never truer than tomorrow. Because if you give up if, – if, if you give them open looks or you give them open rebounds, uh, they're going to capitalize. And because they have the opportunity to do so many things on the defensive end against you, You've got to make sure you're not giving them giving up anything easy to them when you're on defense. Okay, again, uh, state your name, affiliation. We go to the front row here, then we're going to go over here in the uh, left aisle. Thank you. Go ahead. Kyle Tucker, Courier Journal, down here in the front. Um, how are Tyler Ewis and Yogi similar, and where do you see that they're different? And where does Tyler rank in terms of point guards that you guys will have faced this season? You know, I'm not sure it, on, the, on the ranking part. I just know he's really good. You know, we, we weren't ever involved in his recruitment, so I saw him at different times and watched him. So really uh, just spent a lot of time watching him, obviously, last night and, and this morning. But um, there's no question with the year that he's had, he's going to be one of the better players that we faced. But again, he's really good because he's got a lot of other good guys to play with. And Yogi, that's one thing that's made Yogi better and better. Tyler does a really good job of, of – uh, uh, of getting people shots, but he's actually getting more percentage of his points from the foul line than he even is the three-point line. So that's one of the things that really differentiates him um, as a guard. He drives to get fouled, and and um, that's we're going to have to do a great job. Our verticality is going to have to be really good. We're going to have to do a great job of staying in front of the dribble. But he has a great ability to put his body on you and create that contact, and then it becomes a judgment call, and we've got to do – We've got to do a really good job of being preventative there. But there's no question he's an outstanding player. He's gotten better and better. Uh, he had a tremendous reputation as a leader in high school, and he's carried that to a very high level at the collegiate level at Kentucky. And um, other than that, comparisons, I don't really have a lot of things that I would compare them to. I mean, I love coaching Yogi. I wouldn't trade him for anybody. And Yogi's gone up against a lot of great guards. Uh, and, and led his team against a lot of great teams, you know, over the four years and especially this year. On the left side, go ahead. Fred Calgill with the CBS affiliate in Louisville. Indiana at its best, what makes you guys so tough to beat? And when things have gone wrong, uh, maybe like in the Michigan game and the quarterfinals of the Big Ten tournament, what, what's going wrong which prevents you from winning? Well, against Michigan, we didn't play nearly as fast as we needed to. We didn't play nearly as aggressive and um, – and, and, and there and there again, it didn't it didn't start on the defensive end for us. We weren't bad defensively, and it, but we certainly weren't as good as we need to be. And I think what's when we're at our best is when our defense is fueling our offense, and it's getting multiple stops. There was even a point in the first half last night it became a trade basket mode. That that's 
it, it, that's one of the things that I was so ticked off with in the first half is we had a chance to put the hammer down, and that's what we don't always do. So we have to learn that when we get a team down, you know, we've got we've got to we've got to keep the foot on the gas and really really go at it. That doesn't mean the other team's not going to make a run, but they can't make a run because we traded baskets or we gave them uh, easy baskets off our turnovers. So when we're careless with the ball, or we're not moving really well without the ball, and and that's when we're not as good offensively. Uh, when we're not as good in our ball screen coverage, or when we're not as good at, at, at staying connected, like I said, with all five guys, then we're not as. But most teams would say that. But but um, when we get stops and get out and run, that's when we're at our best. All right side, third row. Bruce Sullivan, Courier Journal. Given the anticipation of this game, the high level of the two programs. Do you think that this game tomorrow will have any momentum toward renewing this rivalry, and where do you think that stands? Well, I think, there, I think the games can always come back. I mean, it's, it's right now where we sit, it's, it's very hard for us with what we have with the Gavit Cup, what we have with the Crossroads Classic, which are, and then certainly the ACC Challenge pulls into that. We've got to have a certain amount of home games. So we've already got the neutral site. We're going to do a neutral site with Louisville and then uh, the home and home. I, I don't think anybody's ever closed the door on the series. And, and um, it, certainly it's not open right now with, with anything that, that makes a lot of sense. But hopefully someday it will. And, and again, I've never looked at it like it was closed. And, and, um, but there's nothing on, in the works right now. But um, I mean, every, I think both sides know how each other feels. And it's, it's, if it becomes down to a business decision, then that's what it is. But, uh, as a fan of college basketball, as somebody that has a lot of respect for their program, I hope that at some point in time we can get something going like that. And um, if it happens, it happens. But, but again, there's, I don't think there's any door closed that couldn't be opened again, put it that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Left side right here, and then we'll go over here. Ken Taylor from Wave TV in Louisville. Tom, can you describe your relationship with, with John, and, and was that affected at all by the end of the series? How, how has that developed over the years? I think, uh, was, our, was our relationship affected because the series ended? No, we had our moments with that, but no, I, 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 uh, I think if you have a respect level for somebody, I mean, you just, you have to overlook some things. And um, I have a ton of respect for him. I mean, he has been good to me for a long time. I, he, I learned a lot over the years from him as a coach. We were in the league together at Conference USA when he came back to, to Memphis. I learned a lot not only coaching against his teams, but, but, but watching them play others. And um, so, no, I mean, I, I think we have, a, uh, we have a friendship that transcends the basketball. You know, he's a very encouraging uh, in person, person to me. I think I understand him, and I hope I'm encouraging to him. And um, you really, you're not trying to make enemies in this game. Some you're gonna have closer friendships than the others, but I've really tried to look at competency, respect, you know, and, and, and what you learn from people, and he's got all that, and, and I, think he's, I think he's a fantastic leader. I think he's, what he does year after year and how he makes his teams better, especially with the guys that he gets that have the accolades and the attention and the rankings and all those things that they have, to get them to play together the way that he does year after year, and this year is, is no exception. And, because, I mean, obviously, they've, they've had some tough games. And look, they're playing their best basketball right now. I mean, how do you not respect that? I mean, to me, that's just, I mean, I, I wish you weren't playing them tomorrow. I wish it was later down the road, but it is what it is. And he predicted it four weeks ago that we'd be in this, that we'd be in the bracket together. And he was only missed by one last week because he had Kansas and West Virginia in it. He was only wrong with Kansas, right? So, to me, um, I mean, at the end of the day, he runs, he, he is a great coach who make, makes his players better, and, and that's a tough opponent, and we've got to match up with it. We're going to go to the right side, and then we're back to the left, uh, up front, and then the very back. We've got time for about five more questions. Daryl Bird with the Cats Paws in Lexington. Uh, your players were in here and said you warned them, get ready for an up-and-down game, get the shoelaces tight. Could you envision something similar to 2012 when nearly 200 points were scored? First of all, I, don't, I didn't say shoelaces tight. They didn't say that. So that, well, they're making that up. So they better be tight. If we even have shoelaces, some of the, maybe the shoes have Velcro. But uh, did I envision that? Um, we were pretty fast that year, and so were they. Um, I didn't envision us missing seven layups in that game and two dunks. 
And uh, that's what I still, you're talking about the game in the Sweet 16? I still, I still look at that one. I still see those misses more than I see the 92 points that we scored because we missed some baskets that if they go in, it's a different story. So I think as a coach, you, you, you probably always remember those things more. But um, I don't know if it'll be like that tomorrow, but that team could score and, and this team loves to get up and down too. But again, it's, it, it, we're not very good if we're just trading baskets. That's not when we're at our best. Left side right here. Rick Van Hoos from WLKY in Louisville. I don't know if you heard Coach Cal talk about you, but he's endorsing you for Coach of the Year. What does that mean, and how difficult has this season been for you to coach? Well, it hasn't been difficult for me at all, and it really hasn't because uh, of where my faith in God is, and it's been like that, and I, I've learned so much about what matters, what doesn't, how to stay in control of what you can control. I mean, doing everything every day to make the players better. If, if I didn't have a great group of guys to work with and a great staff to work with and a great family to go home to, then things might be harder. They're not. And, and um, I, I love what I do, and I love who I do it with. And, and I heard that. I didn't see it on the air, but I heard that last night. He said that to me privately before. I mean, he is a um, – um, I don't think he throws around stuff like that unless he means it, and I, and I respect that because he's one of the best coaches this game has got. You know, and I fortunately, lit in the Big Ten, when you go against guys like Tom Izzo and Fran McCaffrey, people like that, you're going to get some great coaches on a nightly basis. And, and you do it with other teams, and, and he's like that as well. But to me, um, I, I love the guys that I'm working with. And if you love what you're doing and you love who you're doing it with and you're trying to get better at it every day, there shouldn't be a lot of difficulty. And for me, there's not. Very back row here. Jermaine Franklin with TSN. Uh, Coach, uh, what makes Jamal Murray as dangerous as he is, and what are some of the things your team is, are going to have to do to slow him down? He's not improved as a shooter. There's no question about that. His shot selection has improved. Uh, he comes off screens extremely well, and he does a good job of getting to the foul line. They do a really good job of getting him open, giving him choices of which way to go to. And we've got to not only be on him with one player. We, there's, they've, they've all got to see help, right? So, I mean, it's not just Jamal Murray. We've got to do a great job of, of showing early help in everything. But without stepping up off their big men and allowing the lob dunks and the drop-off dunks and things like that that go into it and allow the easy post-ups. So the, 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 one of the reasons Kentucky's so good is obviously they've got really good players. Well, the reason they have really good players is because they make each other better. And I think Jamal Murray makes his teammates better, just like Ulyss makes his teammates better. And I think that's... It's one thing, this is, this is why Kentucky is so good. It's not just a collection of really good players. It's a collection of guys that make the game easier for their teammates. And we've got to do everything possible to not let it be that way. And that means we've got to be in help early. We've got to read the ball really well. Uh, we've got to make catches tough. We've got to get back in transition. And above all else, we've got to do a great job of blocking out. Right here on the left side, aisle. Sh Shannon Ryan, Chicago Tribune. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, obviously, Max Bielfeld filled a void you guys had at the time, but it, what's he meant to the team this year? Um, maybe you can talk a little about the, just the role he's filled for you guys. Well, he's, he's filling a role that continues to get bigger and better, and he's playing his best basketball throughout his, se his senior year, and he's, and he's playing as good as he's played right now, and I think it's because he's worked really hard. He, he needed a lot of work with his footwork, and I think you know once we, we got him in on the visit and started to show him those things, I think he understood that. And then understanding it and doing something about it are two different things. But he's worked extremely hard. Um, he, he's become more athletic. Um, he, he's in great shape. And um, he's very smart, obviously, you know, academically and on the court. It's really, his experience, it, it couldn't have gone any better for adding somebody that really, he not only understands the Big Ten, not only understands basketball, but he understands how to win. And now more than ever, he's got a huge role in that winning. And, um, and, I mean, he obviously was well coached before at Michigan. He was well coached in high school. And, but, but we convinced him there were some things that we really thought we could help him get better at. And I think the fact of the matter that he's, he's over doubled the, his, his threes this year than what he had in his entire career. Um, some of the games that he's had, he's been an integral part as anybody uh, of, of being a leader on this team. And, and you can look at it, he's had an impact in a lot of different ways on both ends of the court. And uh, he's one of our leading deflection guys. He rebounds the ball. And yet, at the same time, we're on him to be better. And just even just about 30 minutes ago, on him to be better. And he responds to that. And I think that's what's been great about having him. One final question for the coach. There you go.
There you go. Left side right here. Ken Taylor, Way TV in Louisville again. Coach, the, the Christian Watford shot, how important was, was a moment like that in, in rebuilding this program, and, and does it still resonate today? I know you had pictures all over Cook Hall, and you know people remembered it, and it was obviously played quite a bit on ESPN. Well, there's pictures probably all over the homes of people that love Indiana, and even probably some that just like college basketball, because it was such a dramatic shot at a, at a time when our program needed a real shot in the arm, right? And that's exactly what that shot provided because it was a great game. And again, to me, you know, I, I thought we'd win the game by more, you know, especially when we got up 10 late in the game. But to win with that dramatic fashion, it couldn't have done more for reestablishing us. And, and uh, because obviously Indiana basketball didn't go anywhere as a name, but we needed to get the program back up at, 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 a, at a very strong national level. And that win did that because that Kentucky team was great. And the shot was, it, 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 so many people saw it live, obviously because of the television and because of the, of the crowd that we had. But there were so many memories that were created from that, that that can't hurt at all with your recruiting. It can't help hurt at all with your fan base. And, and the best thing about that shot is we went back the next week and beat Notre Dame, right? So it wasn't like that shot was a, was a primary, it wasn't the only moment in our season, right? We kept getting better. And, and had a great run that year with the, with, the, with the 26 wins or whatever we had and going to the Sweet 16. Thank you very much, Thank Coach. Thank you. Best Thank of you luck. very much. Thank you.